Hello, faithful friends of the internet. I'm Jason Mayfield, and in this video, I'm going to give you a tour of my live streaming setup. And before I start that tour, I would like to say thank you to all of the people who make these videos possible over at jasonmayfield.com give. So I'm gonna go through each key component, kind of walk you around the desk, show you what's going on, First thing you need to know, everything is sitting on a sit-stand desk from Uplift. I will also try to link as much up in the description below as I can. So this is on a sit-stand desk, which means I can move it up or down. Either way, I do all my streaming from an iMac 27 inch. I have a 2013 MacBook Pro, which just happens to be too old to keep up with the live streaming stuff that's out there. Uh, this is not a Pro. This is just a 27 inch iMac, but it has 128 gigabyte of RAM in it. And that's good. So one of the things that I do here to get decent lighting is I have a light that bounces off the wall. The sunlight helps a ton with the front fill, but this white light will catch the blinds when they're shut and everything and just bounces enough back to get me. You could get a cheap white LED and put it there and do that really simply. And because it's bouncing, it's just a little bit softer, not so harsh upon the face. So quickly, let's go through some equipment. I am using a Sony a7 III. I could also use this a6400 if I wanted to, but any camera with a clean HDMI feed you could use. You could do, use a GH5, uh, the Panasonic cameras. Uh, I don't know about the, some of the Canon stuff, apparently you can get into the computer with a USB. I don't totally understand that. There's a lot of videos out there about how to use an M50 from Canon to do this. But anyway, I use an a7 III with a Tamron 17 to 28 on it. Um, that is sitting on an Elgato multi-mount. What I like about this is you can just clip this right onto your desk and uh, you don't have to drill or anything. This actually goes much taller than this, but at the lowest height, it sits right over my iMac uh, top there. And so I'm just shooting my camera right over the top of the computer. Uh, and it looks really, really good. This camera, HDMI, is going into an Elgato cam link. This is not the 4K, it's a 1080. Now, I'm filming this during the coronavirus crisis. And it's real hard to find streaming stuff that you can buy. But if, if you happen to be looking at this video right as it launches, be looking for the Elgato cam link, get it as soon as you can, go ahead and get the 4K. That just USBs into the computer, translates this video to this video. Perfect, it's excellent. Now that's how I get the camera in. What I'm using for audio, now I can do a couple of different things for audio, but this is what I like to do, is I like to use this Rode Procaster. This pop filter, I get a lot of questions about this. You can only get it from one place and I have a link for it down in the description. If you're gonna use the Procaster, I would really encourage you to use a shock mount with it as well. And then I just have it on this Rode boom arm. This microphone is going into this Focusrite Scarlett. It's a USB audio interface, very easy, low power, super cool audio interface. And you can plug all kinds of different microphones in there. I could use my shotgun microphone. I could use uh, this microphone that I'm wearing right now. Just plug that in there, bada bing, bada boom, you're up and you are running. Now the software I'm using to stream live is Ecamm Live. Uh, I got that recommendation from my friend Joshua Verwers. I very much was not sure what to do in terms of this world and because I don't live stream a ton, but when I do, I want it to go well. And so he got me hooked up with Ecamm Live, told me it would work great and it has, so he was correct. Go check him out. Now the third product I'm using from Elgato, a lot of Elgato, you got the cam link, you got the multi-mount. The third Elgato product is the Stream Deck. I have the Stream Deck set up so I can basically just hit a button and whatever I need to happen on my live stream happens. So if I need to run a slide, hit a slide real easy. If I wanna click through different scenes, I can. When I'm streaming live, I'll typically have a countdown and then I go live and then I'll bring somebody on to do a Skype deal with me. That's another thing I really like about Ecamm. It integrates with Skype really, really well. So I just get someone on the phone with me with Skype, bam, I'm up and running, can have them on screen with me. It's super, super cool. And the Stream Deck helps me to do that without clicking around and messing around with everything and makes life super easy. 
Now, when I'm live streaming, I like to stream to YouTube, I like to stream to Facebook, and anywhere else that I can just do a catch-all to stream to. So I'll do like Twitch and Periscope. I don't get a lot of return there, but at least I'm present somewhat. I'm using a service to do that called Restream.io. And so Ecamm Live will stream directly into Restream, and then Restream will broadcast that to all of those areas. So I'll have a link to Restream in the description below, but I really encourage you, if you want to be live in multiple places at once, you can do it there. Also, if you wanted to do a simulated live, which churches, I would really encourage you to do this right now. Pre-record your messages during coronavirus time, and then have them go live at certain moments. And consider not doing your Sunday service at Sunday morning because Sunday morning on Facebook, man, it is just getting trampled with live streams. And so the live streaming service isn't even working for a lot of people. I was just on the phone with a guy earlier about how Facebook Live on Sunday morning isn't working. Why is it not working? Well, because everybody's trying to stream live on Sunday morning. So it's just bogging down the system. But Restream has that feature where you can go in, schedule a pre-recorded video to go live, and then you don't have to man it or be present or anything. You can kind of set it and forget it. It's super, super cool. And there's one other thing that's happening on my desk when I'm live streaming, and that is my speakers. One thing I love about these speakers is that I can just power them off. I actually have these on my other computer as well. So whenever I'm shooting videos or going live, I can turn these speakers off and I know that no audio is gonna come through the computers because you might get a notification or something or the other that goes off. Well, being able to power that down helps a ton. And then to monitor, I send everything back through the Scarlett, which is only gonna have headphone audio and I can listen through headphones whenever I'm live. And then I took a headphone extension and just, it goes back to the back there and is hooked into the Scarlett, but I have the plug-in right here just taped up under my desk and then I can plug in headphones to it. And I use these in-ear monitors from uh, Amazon. These are super cheap. These are like 15 bucks and I can put them in and voila, you don't even, it looks like I have nothing in. Well, it doesn't look like I have nothing in, but it's very concealed and it's very cool. So you can get these super cheap and use those for your monitoring. And the recurring theme with my YouTube room setup is that this is on wheels so I could move my live stream anywhere around the room. Now in my particular situation, and I think this would be the best way to run your live stream, uh, I am hardwired into the internet. I wouldn't try to do a heavy live stream over Wi-Fi. If at all possible, get you a hard line, get you an ethernet cable going straight into the internet. I also have fiber, so I've got a lot of internet stuff working in my favor here at the house. But that's it, that's how I'm live streaming. This is my live stream setup. I hope it was helpful for you to see everything that I'm using. The camera, into the cam link, into the computer, into Ecamm Live, streaming to Restream, going to the world, touching hearts, helping people experience grace for life through Jesus Christ. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.